Hey guys, what's up? My name's The Cool Mike and welcome back with another episode of Stanley Parable 2. For some reason, when I was recording, it didn't record. So now, we're gonna try to see. You go to the left. So we're gonna try the escape route. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Okay, so... I'm not sure if there are any other endings. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any Two, human life. Eight, four, Crushed five. by the weight of this revelation, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the Bucket knew all along? Was the Bucket guiding him? Yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. Okay, so hopefully we're... Uh, yep. Yeah. Stanley and the Bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. We're gonna try the escape room. This one. Escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the Bucket would both meet a violent death. Okay. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the Bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the Bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. Okay. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the Bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the Bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the Bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a Bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Bye-bye. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the Bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the Bucket's life came to an end, as it was crushed violently to death. Okay. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent Bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. So I'm guessing this is the Bucket Museum. The Bucket, welcome to the Grand Exhibit. You are standing at the precipice of knowledge. Much like Bucket itself, the human mind is frequently empty within the rest void, but through use of the exhibit in front of you, the mind becoming poor which is something knowledge the bucket and its history is the only true knowledge we really have. Will you take what you learn here or with or out with you in the world? Will you accept with an open mind what may be challenging about the information in this exhibit? Will you change the lives of yourself and your loved ones as a result exhibit or will you turn to blind eye and continue to live as you were in ignorance and darkness? So let me just see okay. Okay, so, oops. Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? That is not 25 buckets, that's at least a hundred. 
A photograph of 25 pockets, the greatest number of pockets ever captured camera. The photograph experience got a shock for several weeks and result of the trick from exposure to this many buckets at once. And that's look like the Da Vinci of buckets. A bucket with two handles. Oh, it does have two handles. The bucket is fitted having two hands such as that have never been created in real life having been deemed too dangerous and recklessly experimental every year. This is our put to death just for attempting it. Okay. Inferno bucket. A replica of the Inferno bucket, which is medieval era, was so powerful, alluring that it drove the Assassin's nations to war with one another for control of. Wounds died, and yet, in spite of it all, the simple fact remains no one can control a bucket. I did. Okay, drawings. While we know the buckets predate the existence of mankind, we do not know how by how long. This cave drawing depicts early man's discovery of practical uses of the bucket, by which time the bucket had already likely been around for several millennia. Notice in these drawings, how the bucket is allowing itself to be used, having judgmentally to be worthy of its treasures. Okay. No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. The hanging bucket. This place embraces the necessary relationship between the bucket and humanity. However, clear or grass of the bucket. Maybe there is yet more that is always out of reach. This is distance, inevitably. It is for our own good. Am I gonna jump to my demise? Nope. But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. And dead. Okay, that's one ending done. Hmm, what else are we missing? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, here. Okay. So that's one. Stepping in. Okay, so this is another, uh, what you call, yeah, this is another ending, which is, I believe, the escape pod ending, so we're gonna try it. Room closet. We're gonna go back. You are now leaving. Okay. Escape pod bay floor 760. Okay. it's so dark where am I going
Oh, here. Okay. I'm just going up, I guess. Seven sixty escape pod lunch bay three escape. Okay. Uh, it's just black. I don't see. Oh. Oh, there it is. Oh, this is new. Why are you doing touching like this? Okay, so that was one ending. Four, three, four. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could no longer recall. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Uh. Uh. I know I could... This is another ending where he could jump. Okay. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. Okay. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Okay, so, according to here... Choosing yes will cause her to perform your song about Stanley, whereas no will continue with a more thoughtful voiceover. Uh, choosing yes will cause another to perform humorous song about Stanley, whereas the will continue with a more thoughtful voiceover. Okay, let's choose yes and then let's choose no. Uh, 
Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any old time you want, like right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. There once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way, but his brain had long ceased to function. Which is why he is in this parable and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong, and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yes. You too will become quite unbearable. Is it just continuous loop? Okay. Is it just gonna be white? Okay, I'm guessing begin the game again because it's just white and this time let's try oh Welcome Stanley to heaven. Oh god Oh. What do I need to do? Do I need to turn them all off? Begin the game again. So that's another ending. I kind of want to see. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself, and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total Finally, yes! The bucket! Yes, yes, yes! I love that bucket!
Okay. You know what? Let's try going. Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co workers really all be gone? Okay. Yes, whispered the bucket into Stanley's ear. We've done it. We've escaped from that dull office and that pesky narrator. At last, out here in the white void, we are alone. Now, and for the first time, I can reveal to you my true self. The bucket began to tell Stanley of its life and its history, of the countless wars it witnessed, desecrating the land and lives of untold numbers of innocent humans, and the bucket's own complicity therein, of sadness and regret and the many years it spent dwelling on the actions it might have taken to curb the madness and the decay, if only it had been stronger, of hope and redemption, and its crusade to uplift the stock of life for the common man, to manifest justice where none existed, and the bittersweet reality of time, to see one's dreams and wishes met halfway, meted out in parcels like charity, and abandoned as soon as the warm glow of inspiration begins to dim. The opportunities to do so much more. There was so much it could have done, perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself. Perhaps, if it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. This was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? He screamed. You're a bucket! To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. No, said the bucket. Not since the evil wizard Gambhorata first ensnared me in his machinations as payback for the sacred amulet I stole from his treasured vaults. I was young back then and could not conceive the ramifications of... No! Stanley screamed even louder this time. This is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! Why are we even doing this? As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, its fangs glistening like... My God, Stanley, you did it. You saved us from the bucket. Thank God you already had all 12 emblems of sages and knew the incantations to summon their true power. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have easily been overwhelmed by the bucket's power. I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such bravery here today. Come, let's restart the game, and we'll agree to never again go trifling with this bucket, nor the dark magic cast away inside of it. Okay. So, this time... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What I'm gonna do... No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. I will... Yeah. Okay. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Okay, try no this time. Ah, then in that case we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Will it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? 
Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. Okay, so, I'm, let's see, yep, I'm probably going to end uh, this episode right here. I still have a few endings to go, but I'm going to end it here. Hope you guys enjoy uh, what you call this episode of Stanley Parable 2. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe now if you haven't. And as always, I will see you guys next time with another brand new video. This is the Cool Mike signing off. Goodbye.